Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Well, today I saw an article which is rather intriguing, right? <laughs> because to the point, but on point. So the article states that the royals could use, who could they use? Harry and Meghan right now. <laughs> really, we well we, we know we know the stardust, the man, magic of Harry and Meghan, but because of jealousy obviously we know what happened so this article is by it came out in vogue and it's by michelle ruitz hope i'm pronouncing her name right but what she's saying she's saying as royal gossip swirls and kate related conspiracy ther theory bubble to fever pitch and of course we know she's talking about the Photoshop image as an inner palace comms team scrambled to explain away a Photoshop fail and my text chain spiral into unconcern, into concern chaos over Kate's health and that of their marriage. A thought is crystallizing amid the noise. They should have never let Harry and Meghan go. The current embroiler is exposing that the royal family isn't half as savvy or strategic as people are led to believe, nor is singularly focused on preserving the crown. If they were, they would have tried to keep Prince Harry and Meghan within the firm at all cost. Not only because they were stars, and she, in particular, could appeal to Commonwealth country in a way that the rest of the family will never. But also because the firm has left itself weak and short-staffed. Of course, she, she went in now to talk about how Charles had envisioned a slim-down uh, monarchy. But of course, you know, when he said that, he envisioned William and his wife and kids... Harry and his wife and kids, but of course, because of racism, because of jealousy, they discarded Meghan. They acted as if she wasn't a human. They treated her so poorly. The British public, I mean, and I will always say this is not majority. Let's get that straight. I think a lot of the British public would have wanted a different scenario. But of course, William and his jealousy, William and his control tried to put Harry in his place and started treating him very appallingly. We know what happened with the house that they had him in this little tiny cottage and of course they lived in they live in palaces and you know they they just didn't seem like they treated this this um this guy properly. You know, Dinah's son. They just did not treat him properly. So she was talking about the slim down monarchy and she said, During rosier times though, the king's vision was one of efficiency and effort to scale back the number of dis distance relative living, living for life in taxpayer funded apartments. Image wise, a streamlined monarchy also trains subjects focus on King King Charles and their direct heirs. And I was as mentioning to you, it was supposedly supposed to be William, his wife, the kids, his kids, and of course Harry as well. So she said, you know, that was the big thing, the slim down monarchy. But she said, be careful what you wish for. In light of recent events, the king's slim down monarchy is wasting away to nothing. <laughs> if the royals are silent film star, as British playwright Bonnie Greer once noted, their cast has been dramatically diminished after the death of Queen Elizabeth and of course um, Prince Philip the defection of Harry and Meghan to Montecito and we're not going to mention that other one name because I don't even feel that he should be in the same sentence but um, she's saying the monarchy is so slender it's two illnesses away from being a one man show and of course William but we know William is kind of lazy so I wouldn't even think it's going to be a one man show there so this is the part about Harry and Meghan now which is so true that they're saying 
why did we mess up? How did, could we have messed up so badly? She said, whoever might have been helpful in this situation, which two people and their two cute children, cute children, could be sharing sheep and christening ships as we speak, providing a picture skill, PDA filled distraction from the disaster upon disaster spilling forth from the palace. The void left by Prince Harry and Meghan has never been more glaring. Neither has the firm's lack of foresight. Standing up for Meghan against a torrent of racist and sexist abuse, making it tenable for the successes to stay part of this operation, was not only the decent thing to do, but the most prudent for the monarchy. Even if they didn't care for Meghan, or Prince Harry for that matter, they should have been more strategic enough to recognize that the successes were an overall positive and diversifying force for the institution. They should have known that they couldn't afford to lose two of their youngest, supplest star, a couple with a global fan base and tons of runway for, for the future. The firm has other actors, of course. The, law, the royal family is Valent, valiantly attempting to make Prince Edward and Sophie happen, really. But none who captured the imagination and forbid fascination as Diana's sons. The royals have to be seen to believe, as per the queen. Remember, that's what she said. For the royal to be in existence and to remain in existence, they must be seen to believe. <laughs> Basically, now there's hardly anyone left to see. So they are becoming a sight for sore eyes. Nobody likes to see. They are not dynamic like Harry and Meghan. And even when you put the two brothers and their wives together and the family, what a beautiful young family, right? But that's what I'm saying. Jealousy, you have to be careful in life. Because if you're not careful, it eats you alive. And that is what has happened to the royal family. They are eat, being eaten from within. You cannot think that for the monarchy. Remember, no, it's not just about small England. It's about a global commonwealth. The monarchy is global. Everybody see them. Everybody like the beauty. Everybody like the fascination between them. That's because they had two people who were supposed to bring the monarchy up into a modern, and modern um, world because gone are the days where you can go back and rely on the old primitive monarchy. You have to be modern. You have to modernize the monarchy. And that is what especially Megan was supposed to do because, come on, you're talking about the Commonwealth where most people look like her. Most people don't look like William and Kate. Most people look like Megan. Her children are biracial. She is biracial. What a beauty that would be. But jealousy got the better of them. And as a result, they're now suffering. They're suffering significantly because of what they did to that girl, to that woman. But she's striving. Megan is striving. She's doing her own thing. And sometimes God allow people to push you out so you can sh shine. And I think that's what happened to Meghan and Harry. Everything happened that had to happen. They had to be pushed out because that's the only way they were able to now find their footing. So for me, I am so happy that they're doing their thing. They seem to be growing. I mean, when you hear about Netflix talk about them, how that they're dynamic and that people love them, yes, People are going to hate them. People are going to love them. But at the same thing, those same people are watching. And that is what it is. It's what the queen was saying. You have to be seen to believe. If people start seeing you, they will start believing in what you do. So, lovely article in Vogue um, today. Lovely article written by, um, as, as I mentioned to you, Michelle Roitz. And I've always said it, the royal and family messed up big time. So thank you guys for listening. I will be bringing out more of these videos. Lots of things going on in royal circle. But hey, 
We just have to talk about it. Thank you. Bye.